Fire Princess Reviews. I'm Fire Princess Lily here to tell you about comics, cartoons, and other awesome nerd shit. So, SSS Grid, SSS S Gridman, uh, didn't talk about it yesterday due to things getting nuts around here, uh, as is prone to happen sometimes on my shift, but here to talk about it now. We're talking about the episode titled Dreams. Now, if you've never seen a review, episode review on my channel, as always, I'd like to mention that go watch the episode first because I'm going to spoil the crap out of it. Not that a lot really particularly happened in this uh, in this episode itself. Uh, some neat things kind of happened, but overall, it was really a very Gynex episode. But hey, we'll get into that just a little bit. Uh, first of all, let's, uh, let's talk about the monster this week before we do anything else because the entire uh, episode is basically the monster. It's really cool, like, steel, wyvern, dragon sort of creature, like, big, broad wings that, like, produce a lot of fog and smoke, and the cool... I mean, the reason I say that the whole episode is the kaiju is because it puts our protagonists, uh, Rika, Yuta, and Itsumi, to sleep. Like, they're sleeping throughout the whole episode, and so that's why this is entitled Dreams, because we take... the episode takes place in the dreams caused by the kaiju. Now, uh, throughout this whole thing, a Kane, who, as you know, is our antagonist, is actually controlling those dreams simultaneously. Of course, her being the god of the world, she can totally do that. No problems. I have no problem. Or, like, it's suspending my disbelief in believing that she could do that. Especially with Alexis at her side. No problem. Yuna's dream focuses on his amnesia and him waking up, not in Rika's house, but in Akane's house. Although, in his dream... A king's house is Rika's house, and, a king, and Rika's mom is her mom, and it's really odd. Um, yeah. So, like, he's going throughout this dream. It's like basically the very first episode all over again, but this time a king's there instead of Rika, and there's no kaiju nonsense. Like, the junk computer's not there, there's no kaiju in the background. Um, Yuta, obviously, has amnesia, doesn't remember what happened, and so he's just subject to the dream. Now, this is where we get a little bit of a look at what maybe was going on between Yuta and Rika before he lost his memory because a king comes out and says, well, we're dating. Like, so if she's taking the place of Rika in this instance, it could be safe to say that Yuta and Rika were actually an item before he lost his memory, which is why she said, wow, it would really suck if you're faking this right now. Like, so, that's possibly one theory. Now, Itsumi's dream is basically uh, episode... Episode 5 or 6 where, or maybe it was episode 7, uh, where he basically went to a relative's funeral and comes back and meets a cane at a comic book shop and they both bond over kaiju. And that's really, that, that's a really his entire part of this episode is that he real is that uh, they just bond over kaiju and become closer, better friends. Now, Rika's dream is a little different. It's not in that... It's almost like it takes place at a different school altogether. And I feel like the outro uh, reflects this. Like, I think we're going to find a little bit more out about, out about what happened all in Rika's dream in the next episode. But uh, that's just me speculating. And she just develops a natural friendship with a cane. Uh, she even meets Alexis in this dream. Uh, a cane saying that Alexis is just a cosplayer, like, be really spooky if somebody's head really smoked like that. So, yeah. So, throughout all the dreams, you have flashes of Gridman in the background. Uh, just, like, he's trying to reach out to the three, you know, to get them to wake up, etc. And in the outer world, we have the vision of a kaiju. Everybody can see it. 
but it actually doesn't interact with the world around it. It actually moves through the buildings, and the buildings move through it. Uh, basically, it's intangible. Now, nobody else seems to be affected by the sleep at all. Uh, there are people walking around, people say, oh, noticing kaiju. The Evangel... Evangel... The Neon Genesis students are in Rika's shop, like, with the, our three protagonists asleep. They're not asleep. They don't know what to do about the kaiju because it's not really interacting with the waking world. Likewise, Auntie shows up and he's like, where's Gridman? Why hasn't Gridman shown up to beat this kaiju? I've got to fucking beat up Gridman. And they're like, well, he can't show up until uh, that kaiju leaves because of shit. And so Auntie actually goes through and tries to attack the kaiju, of course, to no effect because, well, it's intangible. So the dreams are going on, and Akane's controlling them really well. Alexis is like, this is exactly why I picked you, you know, to help you with these with this stuff, because only you could create such an impressive kaiju. And uh, she's like loving the praise, the plant's working, until it kind of stops working. Um, Yuna's like, I'm forgetting something. And she's like, well, of course you are. You have amnesia. She's like, no, no, I'm like, really super forgetting something. And slowly he starts to figure out that it's a dream. He even says, this is a dream. And she's like, it doesn't necessarily have to be. Just stay like it is. This is nice, isn't it? This is like what you kind of want. Um, and I just want to be like your friend. So it doesn't have to necessarily be a dream. We just stay like this. Meanwhile, Itsumi is also figuring out that it's a dream because he's like, this is, this didn't happen like this. Uh, we did, I mean, we did meet and kind of bond a little bit over kaiju, but we didn't go shopping for kaiju toys and models, and like, we didn't have this deep connection. It really super would have been nice if we had been. We could have been like really good friends if this was reality, but this is a dream. And Rika also at the same time realizes that it's a dream. They're on a bus, and they're talking about going to the beach, or at least Akina's talking about going to the beach with other friends, and she's like, come on, Rika, let's go to the beach. And she's like, mm, yeah, plenty of friends to go to the beach. I think I'll, you know, I think I'll get off the bus, because it's a dream. And so the three wake up simultaneously, sort of, um, in that they are able to power Gridman together inside the dream world, where Gridman then rips the wings off of the kaiju, forcing it into reality. Now... This is where things get super neat, or super cool in my opinion. Um, the Neon Genesis students not, still not being able to wake up the heroes, but now the kaiju is out and attacking the city. Uh, they go and access Flash all by themselves and create a whole new uh, robot together, whose name I actually forget. I might have remembered it yesterday, but hey, whatever. And they defeat the kaiju with a battle axe. It's actually pretty fucking sweet. Uh, do we even need Gridman? I don't know. Uh, but they defeat the kaiju, and then the three wake up, and they are like, wow, we all had, like, weird dreams. Uh, but now we know what we have to do. And, like, Gridman's like, yeah, and you woke up. And he's like, and Yuta's like, yeah, a K needs to wake up too. So, what is this world that they are occupying, and why is it came the god of it? Is it necessarily not real at all? Well, I guess it isn't real at all, but is it all taking place in a Kane's head? Is she in a dream? And were they sent there to, or was Yuna sent there, particularly, to wake her up? Is that why every time he tries to confess his love to Rika, she, something comes and blocks off because she's not real, and he actually is. I don't know, but I am super excited to find out next week as this uh, great show continues. I really like it. Uh, like I said, it was a real kind of guy next episode and like a you know, sort of like, what the fuck? Where is this going? Um, but I like it. So I don't know if next week they're going to talk about, you know, what happened in Rika's dream. I don't know if it's just going to be more about who Kane actually is and why she needs to wake up. Um, you got me, but I'm excited to see what the bet's all about. So, I'm recording a video right after this for Zombieland Summer, because I just watched that. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be lots of fun.
fun. Uh, but if you're not going to watch that video, if you're not interested in Sami Lan Saga, I hope you'll join us uh, for the main video next week, which is, of course, going to be the comic book previews. Uh, I'm going to suggest some comic books to you. Hopefully you like them. Hopefully I'm a good, you know, make some good suggestions. Uh, but definitely check it out. But until next time, I'm Fabric Silly. Love comics, love cartoons, and I'll see you then. Bye!